man, gather round. Today, I have a story to tell. I have a story of victory. I have a story of glory. I have a story about how a few strong and dedicated men were willing to give their very last breath to ensure that ex-felons coming out of prison were able to get high paying jobs where they can pay their bills and have discretionary cash left over to do things like dating and take care of their families or traveling. Things where they can appreciate themselves for not being incarcerated. Guys, hold you sit back here. And the title of today's video is how to get a tech job after prison. Hey guys, I'm doing this video request because uh, one of my viewers asked me to do so. And I believe that we're a community here, guys. And so I just want to tell you what I'm looking to do, man, at 60 years old, man. First, I'm looking to help you younger guys, man. This goes from young boys all the way up to men that are in their 50s because you're younger than me. So this is young boys from 14 up to 55. You're younger than me, so I'm your OG. I want to put you up on the game of life, man. How to control your anger. How to control your impulses, man. So that, dude, you can thrive. You can strive and thrive and excel in mainstream society, bro. Because it's a big game. It's like the game of Monopoly, but this game is called The Matrix, bro. Because what you see is not what you believe it is. You've been taught a bunch of hogwash and lies. And when you follow those lies, it quickly leads you into crime because you're tired of the poverty that you're living in, right? You're like, hey, man, how come they're selling me this narrative, but that's not what's really happening in my life, right? So I'm here to help you to guide yourself through the maze. Secondly, guys, I'm here to teach you how to be a self-sufficient man. What is a self-sufficient man? This is a man that you can drop off in the jungle or the desert or the forest. And he's going to survive, bro. He's got his wits about him. I know, I know that might sound strange to you young dudes, man. It's never, you never think you're going to be in that situation. But it just means being totally um, autonomous in life, meaning that you run your ship, bro. Maybe you're not in a position now where you run your ship, but I'm going to have you in a position where you run your ship and not taking orders from anybody. And if you are, you're only taking orders long enough until you can figure out how to get this motherfucker some orders. And then last but not least, dude, how to be able to defend yourself, bro. Because let me tell you something, man. I learned this growing up back east, and this is what I don't like about men who put their hands on women and kids, bro. Like, let me get, don't get me wrong, bro. My kids were small, and they wouldn't listen. I did this three, three strikes roll, bro. Like, I tell them once, hey, don't do that. That's bad for you, whatever. And then if they do it again, I grab them a little bit sternly. Hey, don't, don't do that. It's bad for you, and I don't got time to be taking the hospital, whatever. But on the third time, bro, like, obviously they're not understanding my tone, my intent, or my intentions. So I spanked that butt, man. And I don't do it out of anger. I just do it out of, like, you get to... Let me tell you something. When you give a little kid some pain, you get their attention, bro. So I don't give a fuck about what Dr. Spock says, like, Hey, you know, when you strike kids, you just teach them violence, solves everything. Nah, no, it's just... Depends on how you do it, man. Because this is what I learned, man. If your kid doesn't listen to you, they're going to grow up and life is going to teach them way more violent lessons, man. So if you really care about your seed or your progeny, you're going to do the right thing. And so I think it's important, guys, you learn self-defense because one thing I learned back east, I see bigger, stronger dudes, man, just beat the fuck out of you because you don't agree. And I don't get wrong, like, I like it out here in California, West Coast and everything. They say everything's bigger in Texas and all that and... Washington State and all that. I'm here to tell you, back east, man, there's part of the country, the United States back east, where they got some giants, dude. I'm talking about, man, you're going to fucking high school with motherfuckers six foot eight, six nine, seven feet. Just huge, man. You're like, what the fuck are they eating, right? No, it's prolific, bro. I've been all through New York, Philly, Detroit, Chicago, Washington, D.C., Maryland, Virginia. Fucking Atlanta, Alabama, Mississippi. You got some beast mode motherfuckers out there, man. I mean, black, white, and others, man. So I'm just saying, dude, I don't know what they're eating, but, you know, and they, you know, when you grow up big like that, you just learn that violence solves everything. So if you have a disagreement with a dude, 
whether it's a verbal disagreement or philosophies or ideologies or maybe even financial disagreement or maybe you both like the same girl they very quickly just beat your ass because they can right and we're not going to talk about gunplay i'm just talking about physicality physicals so you very you, you you have to learn to be able to defend yourself guys because when you're interacting with other grown men, sometimes shit can just go to violence. Some dudes have quick tempers like me. Some dudes are loose cannons like I used to be. Some dudes are emotional wrecks like I used to be. They can't control their temper. They're like a woman. So just imagine, I don't know if you're in a relationship with a woman and they're very volatile, they're emotion, but just imagine if this, your, your woman or your wife or your girlfriend was six foot eight, 300 pounds ripped like a 2% body fat, man. Just huge and strong beyond belief, like a gorilla. And then, you know, it's your anniversary, you forgot to bring her some fucking flowers, man. You know how women go through that emotional spectrum, bro? So just imagine this big six foot eight, 300 pound ripped, strong as a fucking gorilla female just starts slapping you around and beating your ass because you've got some fucking flowers. How would you feel? Exactly. So that's why I want you guys here to, to tune into my channel because I cover self-defense as well, like realistic, because it gives you self-esteem, gives you the ability to be confident and to speak your thoughts. So how does that relate to getting a tech job after prison? Well, I'm going to tell you how it relates, guys. Because here in California, I don't know how it is back east because uh, when I got out back east, when I was back east going to prison, I was still a teenager. And back east has a funny policy, man, like, you can do all kind of violent crimes, man, up until you're fucking 18. And, you know, you just go to, yeah, you go to a maximum security, it's called youth prison, but you don't go to the real penitentiary until you're 18. So then, they, let's say they give you, I'm just going to make this up, let's say they give you, I'm just going to make this up, 10 years. So let's say you're 15. I've seen dudes in youth prison until they're like 25, bro. Now, if they're just going off doing crazy shit still in there, They'll ship them off to adult prison, but I've seen dudes in there for sure, 21, 22, because they're just finishing out their time. They pretty they started mellowing out after then. But the point I'm making is this: I don't, I didn't ever try to get a job back east when I got out of prison, because all I thought about when I was in prison, it was just like the movies, how to do more crime, how to do it better. Like, what did I learn? Oh, don't do this, you won't get caught. But I'm still, you know, involved in crime and just fucking demonic depraved activity just you know i was just a fucking bandit beast right a barbarian but in california when i went to prison i did, went to prison i did my whole 30s in prison a whole decade of my 30s just gone and i just sat there and i looked at all the madness and the mayhem at level four and level three four and five just madness dude and I said to myself there's got to be a better way because i ain't built for this shit with these crazy fuck faces cannibals, rapists, serial killers, man, fucking pedophiles, man, fucking crazy shit, bro, crazy shit, right, so I said there's got to be a better way, and I think the better way is through education, so I want to tell you guys my story of how to get a tech job after prison, and while I'm going to go into some details, I can't tell you all the details, because I'm going to be working with uh, Big Herc and Big Ant and Fresh Out University, I'm actually going to make some courses um, along with the prison professor to actually walk men through how to get high paying tech jobs after they get out of prison because it's not easy and that's why I said how to get a tech job after prison because when you get out here in California man you can get day labor jobs all day that bust your back dude they just bust your ass like non-skilled non labor just working the dog shit out of you dude for it's, I think it's like minimum wage, but don't quote me, you people who like to attack me and say, hey, that's not true, I made a lot of money, y'all can structure, well, I didn't, motherfucker, I got out, man, I was a dude was taking, um, it was called a jackhammer, bro, you did, you break up the sidewalk, then I took a shovel, I put it in a fucking wheelbarrow, then I had to take the wheelbarrow all the way to the other side of the construction site into this big dumpster, fucking put the wheelbarrow, the contents of the wheelbarrow, which was broken up cement from the sidewalk, into the world, into the dumpster, bro. And I did that all day, man. Even though you got gloves on, bro, that's some back-busting work. That fucking jackhammer, it's hard to control that fucking thing. And then the shoveling all day, bro. And the foreman's on you, man. Hey, man, chop, chop, get busy. You know you're an ex-felon, right? 
Then I got promoted to hog carrier. Hog is just a mud that goes in between. You you work for bricklayers and masons. You just you go up and down the scaffolding, man. That's just no joke, man. Then I got a fair heist. That's how I got. That's how I got dropped out of special forces, man. Green beret, man. I was repelling backwards out of a fucking helicopter, man. And I got dementia, bro. So I got kicked out of that. But I I got a fair heist. So you're going up and down these scaffolds, man. And it's precarious, dude. And then you fucking doing roofing and shit, man. You don't rebar all this fucking shit, busting your ass in the elements, dude. Day labor like sweeping up construction sites, bro. And I don't mind the hard days work. Don't get me wrong, but then the pay was not relevant to the amount of effort I put in there. So what I very quickly did was I was like, hey man, I ain't built for this shit, man. So I just hit up some of my homies, man. So some of my homies like had jobs moving furniture, which is another physical job. Yeah. That was better than doing construction for me, guys, because I, um, you would get tips from the people who you would deliver, and this was high-end furniture, man, like, what, what were they called, armoires, and nice desks, and bedroom sets, and pianos, stuff like that, to, like, the high-end people, this was, like, in Pebble Beach, Carmel, dude, that's the area where I'm from, I'm in Central California, guys, so you got some rich people here, and they, they order this fancy furniture from all over the world. And you put it on the truck and you deliver it to their house. They be, don't scrape the wall. They have a painting from the Middle East that's worth two million. And you better not scratch it. And you think they're kind of bossy, which I got it. But once you do a good job, dude, we easily get $100 tips apiece. Like they just give us, it was four of us. They give us each a $100 bill. So I came up on that job because it was pretty cool. But the one thing I learned was working in the office with the hot ladies in there that do all of the they do payroll and they do all the accounts and they do all the sales for the the office you get to see all this office software man so basically what I did was um, I would talk to the ladies you know of course I was horny I'm not gonna lie but I've le I learned in prison you can't let a person know your intention like if I was gonna stick a dude like say a dude pissed me off man like he just kept you know for example when I was in prison dude I would study a lot. I studied math and I studied English and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Because um, even though I got my GED, I wanted to take some college courses. And you had to take this CLEP, college level entrance prep, 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 prep or something like that. And you had to have a certain score even to go to college, right? So I was in there studying all that stuff, man, because I was preparing for the streets, right? But then what happened was um, when I'm talking to the ladies there, they let me know that, you know, oh, you got to be able to type really fast in order to work in the office. So the first thing I did, guys, is I went to uh, I went to community college and I took a typing class, bro. And this is key, homie. You got to be able to type without looking at the fucking keyboard. You got to be able to do that, man. You got to, if you're going to type 80, 90, 100 words a minute, yeah, that's possible, dude. And just to get a job, you, you got to be able to type like 60 words per minute, you know, with an accuracy of like 90 something percent. So that's the first thing, guys. You got to, first of all, well, that's not the first thing. Here's the first thing. When I was in prison, dude, level four, level three prison, I quickly got up to like 340 pounds because there was some big, small specimen of dude. You got ex professional football players, professional, ex professional basketball player, ex hockey players wrestlers dude this beast mode dudes up in there man just beast mode dude so i figured i'm gonna be the biggest strongest dude in prison was that was that the, was that the, when i was the strongest dude i was one of the strongest dudes because when i was in prison dude like specifically i remember at uh, mule creek they had three yards man and they would have a this was back when they had the waist they had a powerlifting competition on each yard i won the powerlifting competition on my yard and then they they get the three the three different yards together for an overall powerlifting champion, and I'll try to find the paperwork to show you guys, man. But I got some people that know me that been in prison with me. They know the story, and so not only did I win in a yard, I won it for the whole prison. And I did that for the few years that I was there. I forgot how many years I was there. It's just kind of blurred. Ten years is kind of blurred, you know what I mean? So I did it. I did a. I think I did a. I don't want to exaggerate. I did like almost a year in uh, the county. And I did almost like a year in San Quentin. And then I did a year in fucking New Folsom. And then I think I did like, I did like three years in uh, Mule Creek that I can remember. 
correctly. So during that time, that's what I did, man. So I was fucking small, 340 pounds, fucking 38 inch fucking thighs, 20, 20 fucking three and a half inch arms, man. 20 inch calves, just big motherfucker, man. No neck. I got pictures. So uh, I'm working in pre-release, man. I had this female teacher that came in. She's a civilian. They have civilians that work in these prisons. She was hot, by the way, but I never... I never tried to do nothing because I was practicing no fat guys. I was like, no, I'm not. You know what I mean? So I just wasn't. Another one. But she was like, she explained to me, if you think you're gonna walk out of this prison and you're gonna get a job, man, in the office with women like me, with 340 pounds, you six foot four, 340, and I had a big ass beard and I had a homie the clown like fucking haircut, you know, like Friar Tuck bald on top and I had an afro around the sides, right? And no neck, just huge, man. She said, you are, you are sadly mistaken, you know. You need to figure out as you get closer to getting out. Like, I got it, you know, you want to look mean and crazy and big. But as you get closer to getting out, you got to slim down. And so that's why when I did my last, uh, I think I did my last uh, year at Chino. Yeah, I think I did it. It was either a year or two. I don't remember. I'll, I'll count it up for you. I'm just Right now, I'm just telling the story. So just bear with me. So when I got to Chino, man. She knows level one, but I was inside of the prison. I wasn't on the, I wasn't minimum security outside. So I made a decision there and to do like Arnold did and just run my muscles off. So all I did at Chino was I just ran a lot. I did a lot of bar work. Like I didn't even lift weights. Like Chino still had weights. Even though other prisons, the upper level prisons had taken them. Because I remember when they took the weights from level two Avenal. It was fucked up. So I get to Chino, there's weights. I'm like, wow, but I had given up weightlifting. I just did a lot of running. And uh, calisthenics and bar work, dude. So that gives you like a ripped physique, man. And I just quit eating a lot of meat. I don't want to say I went vegetarian, but I just was like, you know, I was eating a lot of vegetables. So, you know, for example, a chow and chino, you can kind of sit where you want it. Because you just walk the chow when you feel like it. And so when I get there, I mean, it's very easy for me to tell a dude, hey, man, I'll give you my chicken for your green beans. The motherfucker's like, you must be stupid here. You know what I mean? Or I give him like my meatloaf for some broccoli, right? Because I'm just trying to lose my muscle. So I went from, uh, I'll never forget, I went from 340 pounds. I think I did two years of Chino. Yeah, I think, yeah, I did. I think I did two. So I went from 340 pounds down to like 195, man. Just ripped. Just ripped beyond belief, dude. And then, so then when I was doing the construction, you know, I, could, I was so ripped, I could just do construction with my shirt off. Because when you're working like in Sacramento or Fresno or whatever, dude. It's so hot, man. You just gotta have your shirt off, bro. So I had a nice tan with Rip. So, fast forward, I'm doing this furniture delivery and I'm working in the office. I gotta go into the office to get your, um, it's a sheet that tells you your deliveries for that day. So I got the sheet, you know what I mean? We load, it, we, we load up the furniture on the trucks and shit. And get our lifting equipment like your belts and then the straps to pull us, you know, lift the stuff. And I would always talk to the ladies, man. And I'm like, hey, how'd you learn to type so fast? And hey, what's that program? Oh, this is a, this is a spreadsheet program. Oh, this is a, um, this is a tax program. Oh, this is a, um, this is a, um, this is an email program. So I was like, okay, I didn't know what none of that shit meant, but I was just talking to them. And so, uh, I just decided, man, I was going to take up fucking typing so that was the first thing so then when I was taking up the typing dude I talked to another homie of mine I ran into a guy out of prison and he was doing computer jobs and that so I just was like hey homie I'm tired of moving furniture man like I need to I need to I want to learn computers man he's like man homie this shit wasn't easy to learn but motherfucker if you want to change your life I'll help you it's like yeah I'm tired of moving furniture and just because dude I still wanted to lift and stuff because I was starting to get like really wimpy and stuff even though you lift the furniture, you're not working all your muscles. So dude was like, hey man, since you're in school, just go ahead and take some computer courses. So what I did was, since I was already taking the, uh, I think it was called 10 key, I was taking the 10 key typing class. Then I took a class like introduction to computers, introduction to the internet, you know. Oh, oh yeah, how to build a PC from the ground up. I took a class like that, how to build a PC from scratch. And I just did those courses, man. I wasn't playing like I was asking. Them. Like, everybody in college hated me, dude, because I was always asking a bunch of questions on a lecture. Because this shit was foreign to me. I didn't know what the fuck that shit was, man. 
I ain't know what the internet. It wasn't even on the internet when I went in. So I was asking stupid ass questions on the. Everybody be like, <sighs> and I'd be like, yeah, you can breathe hard all you want, motherfucker. Like I'm trying to learn some shit. So fuck you. You know what I mean? So I just asked a lot of questions and I just studied a lot, turned in my papers and stuff. And so then what I did was, guys, is uh, I started working for these, like the day labor I worked for, these was called day labor jobs, man. It's called day, let's actually come to call day labor. You go in there, you sign in, you sit down, and then you wait for them to call, you know, oh, there's a construction site needs, you know what I mean? So I wasn't part of a union or nothing like that. I was just like unskilled labor. So I did the same thing, you know, my homie turned me on to these, it's called temp agencies, and what I focused on, guys, was, um, it's called data entry. So I'm focused on jobs to do data entry, man, and all data entry is, like, you take some, uh, papers, let's say, and you digitize them, you type in the information into a computer, you know what I mean, or there's other data entry where you take phone calls, like, you know, I work for an insurance company, and then people would call in. And you would have to take down, you know, first name, last name, their address, phone number, you know, their age, their occupation. You got to type that shit in there while you're talking to them on the phone. And your typing skills get really, really good. And then here's another thing I got to tell you guys, all right, well, before I get too far along. And I, I got to be honest with you. Uh, the reason I did the temp agencies is because, dude, I had, um, I got five violent felonies in California. I got a three strikes law. And before you guys start talking about Hey, man, you got five feathers. You still be under the three strikes and everything. Well, I wasn't sentenced under the three strikes, bro. I was sentenced long before that. And the way that the law is worded, I wasn't sentenced under the fucking three strikes. So my five violent felonies, I just was a stupid dude. I was a violent dude. And I just associated violence with crime. So I always did violent shit. So I had five violent felonies. So when I was trying to get, like, a job, dude, like, I was trying to get a regular job, like being a delivery driver or... You know, fucking post office. I was applying for all kinds of jobs because I was on high risk parole. And once you put, let me tell you something, guys. I'm gonna be honest with you, and I'm not trying to tell you what to do. My subscriber asked me for this video. I'm telling you what I did. Now you got to use your own discretion. I'm not trying to get you in trouble with your fucking parole officer. I'm not trying to go against your morals as a Christian or a Buddhist or an atheist or a Muslim. None of that. I'm telling you what I did because I was on high risk parole. High risk parole, I did three years, man. I had to check in every fucking week. He would come by to see where I was living at. And it, but he never gave me no vouchers for food, clothes, nothing. But he was on my fucking jock all the fucking... I hated that dude, man. What was his fucking name, man? I'm gonna look it up, because I hated that dude. He's dead now. Somebody smoked his bitch ass. Smoked his ass. That's how bad he was, dude. But anyway, um, I had to have a job. If you don't have a job or a residence, or address, they violate you, I wasn't going back to prison, dude, no, I, you know, I, I met a lot of dudes, man, because I was in a homeless shelter, and they was like, oh, OG, you just penitentiary scared, I was like, motherfucker, I was like, Vato, you can call whatever the fuck you want, I ain't being locked up again with a bunch of stinky, depraved motherfuckers, man, you can call whatever, I'm gonna do right, man, fuck that, you can do crime all you want, I'm gonna do right, so anyway, man, uh, I would put down on the application, Oh, do you have any felonies, or have you ever been convicted of felonies? I put, yeah. Man, I'm, I'm being honest with you here. Nobody called me back. And then my parole officer was like, Hey, if you don't have a job, uh, it's in the month of violating. I'm like, dude, I've been I've been looking for work. Remember? Hey, man, just work out there if you want to work. You just lazy motherfucker. Right, so that's why I was doing a day labor job, bro. Because <laughs> it was a bunch of felons, dude. There's a bunch of ex-felons in there working, but... It's like slave labor, bro. So I was like, nah, man, I want a, I want a cool job. I work in the office. So I was putting in for, like, delivery driver, post office, UPS. It's different jobs I put down. Do you have a family? Yes. So then my homie told me, nah, man, just don't put down that you got a family. I go, dude, that's that's against the parole rules, man, because when you read the par your parole packet, your parole handbook, you have to let people know that you're a felon. So that's why I'm telling you, man, you know, this is the disclaimer. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you what I did. So I put down no. So guess what happened, guys? You know, because I trimmed down to like 195, had a nice tan, shaved off my fryer tuck here, trimmed my beard down like, you know, it was nice. Nice like the weekend's beard. The dude, the weekend, I trimmed it down like that. 
you know, I got some cool, I got some nice presentable clothes from the homeless shelter. Like, yeah, they were kind of tight and they felt kind of weird, but it was better than my prison blues that I paroled in, you know, my boots with my blue jeans and my blue prison shirt, right? Because I was wearing that for a while. Because I ain't have nobody, man. You know, my family down on me because I wasn't a good person. I got it. So anyway, dude, uh, I started getting these jobs because I put down no on the fucking um, application. So I got these jobs, man, doing data entry, working around women. Back then, the guys remember I'm doing no fap celibate. So even though the women had fat asses and fucking perky nipples, man, I wasn't. I just had my blinders on like a horse at a racetrack, bro. I was just like, I got to get this money because I had to get out of the homeless shelter, dude. The homeless shelter was just madness, dude. So look, the homeless shelter to kick you out. At 7 in the morning, man, with a fucking a lunch bag of, like, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with some cookies and some spoiled milk and some fruit. And then if you ain't back in line at 5 p.m. to get into the shelter, bro, you're, you're done, man. Because, like, there's only a certain maximum of, amount of room or beds. And they got this big dude at the door counting everybody that comes in. So if you get in at the end of the line, you might not get in. So you got to get, you know, you got to leave from your job. You get there about 5.30, line's already long, you're getting the fucking line. Pray you can get back into the homeless shelter so you can shower and sleep in a bed, man. Not Because I didn't even have a car back then. I wouldn't want to just sleep on the street, right? So it was just madness in there, dudes fighting and just crazy shit, right? It reminded me of level one prison, man. So I was like, I got to get out of there. So I just would stack my chips, man. So here's what happens, guys. The uh, manager would call me in the office and... Uh, you know, he would say, uh, hey, you know what, um, your, uh, your background check came back and it's, you got some felonies here. And I go, well, you know, I paid my dues to society. He said, I don't give a shit about that on your application. You said no felonies. And I was like, hey, man, I'm just trying to do the right thing, man. Just give me a chance, you know. Now, some people, you know, if they're cool and I'm just going to say this, man, and this is not a racial thing, you know, some people are, some of the minority people would just kind of be like, okay, you've been working good so far, you know, just stay doing what you're doing, we'll keep you on. And they, they understood, because I think minority people, it's, you always got a story of some uncle or cousin that's been incarcerated, right? But then, um, sometimes the Caucasian people, when they found out, man, they was, uh, they wasn't having it, man. And I don't know if it's because of it's a lack of empathy, or a lack of understanding, or if they felt like, you know, you betrayed them, or whatever, and, you know, it's cool, man, but I just, I'm just telling you what I did, I just would, I just would lie on the application, so I'm not telling you to do it, like I said, I'm telling you what I did, so then as I'm working in the office, guys, you know, working, it's mostly women in the offices, dude, this is kind of weird, too, like, I'm, I'm the only dude, yeah, there might be one or two dudes, but none of them was, like, 6'4", 195 pounds, ripped, I'm talking about ripped, dude, like, I mean, my arms are still pretty big. Like, they're like, my arms are like 18-something inches, man. My thighs were still pretty huge. Like, maybe now they weren't 38 inches, but they were like fucking 20, 28 inches, man. You know what I'm saying? With like 18-inch calves. I was pretty, pretty, pretty jacked. The guys that were in there like, you know, little wimpy little bitch boys with pot belly little fat dudes, right? You know, like the little effeminate dudes that do a lot of gaming and stuff. and But they're good with computers, that kind of thing. So here's where this comes in, Bryce. I would, I, would, I would befriend those guys because I didn't want to keep talking to the women because I didn't want to slip up and have sex because I made a vow to myself I wasn't going to have sex until I had a really good job and I was out of the homeless shelter, right? That's the that's the vow I made to myself. So I'd befriend these old geeky dudes and I'd be asking them about stuff like the software we're using and they would tell me about it. Like They would tell me about, you know, spreadsheets, man, and powerpoints and all this stuff and email and all that so then while I was in school I would just go ahead and sign up for another class like I would sign up it's called Microsoft Office um, products man or Office Efficiency Tools and I would take those classes and every time I get paid I would like get a nicer shirt or a nice pair of pants you know one piece of thing to add to my wardrobe and I would just learn to carry myself and to use the the English language that is dictated in the office, you know, I wasn't like, yo, dog, what's up, Holmes, hey, Vato, Vato Loco, you know, hey, fuck you, dude, no, I wasn't, I wasn't talking, I was you, hey, good morning, how are you today, it's a beautiful day, nice to see you, I'm going to get some coffee, would you like some coffee, 
That type, that type of, you got to be like a chameleon, man. And so me just going to getting those jobs, man, like whether I got it through a temp agency or whether I got it through lying on the application, it takes about, <laughs> it t- sometimes it takes from uh, three to six months for your background check to come back, maybe 30 to 90 days. But I got three months of paychecks, bro, and then sometimes they would keep me on something. But anyway, every office I learned more etiquette and how to carry myself, how to be around people that weren't murderers and killers and rapists and serial killers and things like that. I just learned how to carry myself, and I befriended the guys in the office, you know, because the women would want to have sex. Like, when, you, when you're when you doing no fap semen retention, women can just see your, they can just smell that you're full of testosterone with, through your hormones, man. I wasn't trying to release anything, because I, I had a mission to get out of the homeless shelter. But, um, that's the brux of it, but like I was saying, I work on Fresh Out University. I'm going to have an actual course to walk you through detail do detail how to get the money to go to college what courses to take how to get a job while you're in college um, to validate your technical skills and more importantly how to cover the the questions on the application about your felonies and how to cover that and in, uh, in your interviews so if you find this type of topic you know this type of content interesting subscribe to my channel thumbs up on the video man because the more thumbs up and likes you have the, I don't know, there's an algorithm on YouTube, man. And then you want to like it, bro. And then you want to hit the notification bell so you know you're notified when I'm getting a new video. But more importantly, you want to share it, man. Like, share on your Facebook page, man. Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. Tell your homies about it. Like, your ex family homies is trying to change their life. Because some of your homies don't want to change. They like being incarcerated. That's why I think they're undercover gay. Because, man, if you're really not gay, homie, you don't like being locked up with a bunch of funky-ass men. I don't give a fuck what your set is, what your affiliation is, dude. After you do some hard time, like level 3, 4, 5, like level 1 to 2 is like a camp. When you do level 3, 4, 5, you get some scare straight in your motherfucking ass, homie. So if you got some homies you want to do right, turn them on to my channel. Until next time. Also, put some comments in here, other videos you'd like me to make, man. It's going to help you to do more positive things. Until next time, OG Surfback, out.